Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 2 of How to Program in C++. Last time, we went over variable declaration and the basic idea of variable manipulation. And in this episode, we are going to explore the conditional statements for is, if, else, switch, and looping. So to begin, let's start with the if statement. An if statement is the most fundamental statement and you're going to use them a lot in program. And what this does is check the condition and if it is true it will perform action. So just to better explain what's going to happen, I have an if statement. In these parentheses, we put some sort of condition. The conditions we can check for is check equals using the equals equals operator. We can check greater than or less than, which can be done with greater than, less than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. And then we can also check not equals using the exclamation mark and the equal sign. So let's say I have an integer for say bananas and I have three bananas. Now if I want to say bananas equals equals zero, I'm gonna see out out of bananas. However, since bananas equals three, I should not see this line of code in the or this line of text in the terminal when I build and run it, which I do not. However, if bananas does not equal zero, I should see it, and I do. And this if statement, what you write inside is not limited to integers. You can check if boolean values are true and you don't need to say equals equals true or equals equals false. If you just write the boolean variable name, you can write in, or you can just write exclam boolean variable name for true. I mean, exclamation point boolean variable name is the same way as saying boolean variable name equals equals false. So let me just show you. If I set boolean equals equals false. I should also set this to false first. So if I set boolean equals equals false, I see out of bananas here. And I can also say not boolean. And there we go. So just remember, if statements, check condition. But let's say I want to check how many bananas I have. So I, I want to see out have bananas if bananas is not equal to zero. So here I have an if statement checking if bananas is zero and I'm see outing out of bananas. And if I set bananas equal to zero, what does is it plays both of them. Now I could just reuse this if statement and just say bananas is not equal to zero However, there is a B 
bit more optimal way of doing it, and that is known as the else statement. Now what an else statement does is if the if statement condition is not met, it will run the else statement. But if the if statement is tr is met, then it will just skip over the else statements. So now let's build and run. I am out of bananas, but it doesn't tell me I have bananas. And if I have seven bananas, I can see that I have bananas. So that's the useful thing about if and else. You can check for a condition, and if it's not met, you can do something else without having to write out an, an, an entirely other if statement. But let's say you want to check a bunch of conditions for the same type of variable. You could just link together a bunch of if-else statements, but it would be a bit easier to just write out a switch statement. And a switch statement, as I said before, is equivalent to a bunch of if-else statements. And it checks a condition and then it has a bunch of cases for the value of this switch statement. So let's say I have a case for zero bananas. I want to see out out of bananas and I always have to add a break statement because I don't want it to keep reading different cases case, and let's say if I have seven bananas, I want to see out lots of bananas. And then it's always best practice to have a default case. And for this, I'm just going to say out, you have bananas. Oh, forgot the break statement here. So let me just explain what's going on here. The switch checks for a condition and then runs by each case. And then it just reads out the words in the case. And then once it gets to this break statement, it just skips everything else in the switch statement and goes to the end, which is after the curly brace. So right now, since I have seven bananas, I should see lots of bananas. I'm just going to comment out this bit of code here just so it doesn't get confusing. Lots of bananas. And if I have three bananas, it should see out the default. You have bananas. And if I have zero, out of bananas. So just a quick refresher. The switch statement is similar to if if else statements. However, it is used to check a series of conditions for the same variable. And once again, the switch statement is not limited to integers. You could check for floating point values, characters, booleans. However, it's kind of pointless to do booleans because you might as well just use an if-else statement at that point. Now that's all for switch statements and other conditional statements. And then the next thing there is to do for basic programming is looping. Now there are two main different types of loops. The while loop, which checks a condition and then performs it and then does whatever is in these brackets until this condition is no longer met. So for example, if I were to have an integer or countdown set it equal to, let's say 10. While 
countdown is greater than zero. I want to see out uh, countdown. And then just write a new line. And I also want to subtract countdown by one. And one thing I didn't mention in the last video, if you want to do plus equals one or minus equals one really easily, you can just say minus minus or plus plus. It doesn't work for multiplication and division because multiplying and dividing by one is just itself. So that would be kind of pointless. Also, when using while loops, make sure you can always get out of the loop, even if you have to use a break statement at times in order to get out of your while loop. So one important thing to know about the break is that it brings you one level up. So if I have a while loop in a while loop, the break statement will get me to the external while loop. And once again, practice makes perfect, so if you're confused, check it out yourself. And that always usually helps. So now, if I build and run, you can see that it has 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then once it gets to 0, it knows that 0 is equal to 0, but not greater. So instead, it just exits the while loop. And once again, I can also check for greater than or equal to or use Boolean statements. Really, any variable can go into these. And then there is a for loop. Now, a for loop can do several things. First, it can initialize a variable, so we can say countdown equals zero. Then it can check for conditions, such as say countdown is greater than 10, and then it can perform some sort of arithmetic, such as incrementing countdown. So now I can see out countdown. So if I were to click build and run, that's odd. Hmm. Wait a minute. Right, this middle section is the condition to enter and continue using the loop. So we need to count down to be less than 10 for this to activate. So let's see what's going here. Oh, this isn't right. Sorry about that. Let's see what's going on here. Now, okay, where's my terminal going? Not sure where that lag came from. So, we have our while loop counting down and then we get to zero. And then we have our for loop taking our countdown value, setting it to zero checking if countdown is less than 10, and if it is, we are incrementing countdown all the way up back to 9. So you're probably wondering when do you want to use a while loop versus when you want to use a for loop. Well a for loop is a condition controlled loop. It's a count controlled loop I mean. So because of this, if you want to count values, then you definitely want to use a for loop. Like say you have five digits in a zip code, you know it's going to be five every time. So if you wanted to manipulate each digit of the zip code value, you would probably use a for loop because it's certain. However, a while loop is condition controlled. And because of that, you are a bit more free to do whatever you want. You don't have to be incrementing any values or decrementing. In fact, it's usually best practice to use a while loop if you're checking for 
if you're not working with numerical values. So if I have a boolean statement in here, then I would want to use a while loop. Meanwhile, for a for loop, it's always best to use them when you're working with numerical values. And it's really just a best practices. Both of them will yield the, re the same result. So it's just a habit you have to get into. And last is a slightly different version of the while loop. Now I am referring to the do while loop. Now what do while does is run some code first and then checks if a while statement's condition is met and if it is then it'll run the do while the do section again. So it's basically a while loop with the order switched around where the while checks a condition and then begins the loop the do runs the code at least once and then again for as long as the while loop is met. So it's just a small difference. So if I get my countdown example again, so set countdown to greater than zero. Now just copy and paste this. I'm just going to comment out this other while loop so it doesn't get confusing. And we should, so yeah, this time we see 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Versus last time with just the while loop. Let's see what it did. So yeah, it doesn't show all of the characters like it did last time. So it's just a really small difference. Oh wait, I never did this right. So countdown greater than zero. And we're going to reinitialize countdown to 10. Yeah, so this will give you a better idea. With just the while loop, the smallest integer we see is 1. Whereas with the while loop itself, the smallest integer we see, it actually goes all the way down. So it's just a very small difference, but, well, actually, just to double check, because most of the time do while loops seem to have the same results. In fact, it really comes down to a matter of preference, in my opinion. I like to use while loops. I've seen some people use do while it doesn't make that much of a difference. So if you want to while to be written after your do or whatever, they are basically the same thing. So anyway, thank you for watching. If there are parts that are confusing you because either I didn't explain them well enough or you need me to go over them again, please let me know. Otherwise, in the next video, we are going to be making our first program, which is going to be just a simple grade calculator to use variable declaration, variable manipulation, if statements, and loops. And it'll act as a review slash recap of what we have learned through the past two episodes, and I hope you stay tuned. Goodbye.